Uh, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Welcome to uh, Deep Night Revelation. We'll be picking up where we left off last week. These guys are on a planet that they have learned is called Entrada uh, by the primitive people on the planet. The, the civilization here <clears throat> has a Bronze Age and, and uh, a, a Bronze Age civilization that they have uh, kind of learned... Uh, through scientific uh, processes and whatnot, hasn't really changed for like a thousand or more years. And uh, the people here are perfectly happy with that. And they're, the scientists that they have brought along that have been staying on uh, the Desinex, their uh, Deep Night Scout, um, have taken to calling these people Furbolgs. <clears throat> and the people, of course, of Entrada don't refer to themselves as Furbolgs. They just refer to themselves as the people. And so <clears throat> the chief of the uh, Tala Uneth tribe, uh, Chief Kalwan, um, has basically entreated the, the travelers to assist him. Um, his son uh, was kidnapped, and his son, on here, what was his son's name? Start with an A, if I remember correctly. Stupid furbolgs, they have weird names. Abigail. <laughs> well, that's why he was kidnapped. Um, Ione. Boy named Sue. Yes, Ione um, was kidnapped. Uh, come to find out, it, he was kidnapped by Kalawan's mother. And the whole situation with that mess was that Kalawan was originally the chief of the Tala Uneth uh, people. They And she, <clears throat> she basically became more and more totalitarian. And uh, instituted some draconian type um, laws and and whatnot, and most of the tribe wanted her out, and they wanted her son Kalwan to take over, and so she was pretty much kicked out of uh, Tala Uneth, and um, she wasn't necessarily banished though, and this this was this is really. Um, Kalawan's mistake, but she was kicked out, and instead she went to this other hill fort settlement, uh, the settlement of Lasky, <laughs> and and then she turns around and kidnaps his son, and this, this kid has been um, in Lasky with her for, I mean, it doesn't give an exact amount of time, but I mean, it seems like he's been there for a while, like maybe a little over a month, and it's a very tricky situation. Kalawan doesn't want to go in and, you know, he knows that his mother, even though his mother doesn't want to, um, his mother will kill the kid because <clears throat> she as as a chief, she has to make good on her threats. And um, of course it would pain her to do so, but she would still do it at the same time. Kalawan doesn't want to have to kill his mother, but he's starting to come to the realization that, that may have to happen. And then these guys showed up. And so um, Kalawan is not a complete idiot. He, um, and he can see that, uh, that the travelers have advanced uh, technology and capabilities. And he wouldn't use the word technology, but he knows that you guys have advanced abilities that are simply not available to him or his people. And, um, and they're not ruled by the same customs as them. That's there. There's that too. And, uh, and the reality is though, he doesn't even know 
the full extent of what you guys are capable of. I mean, you're talking about a group of people, Bronze Age people. They have no, <clears throat> they have no concept of uh, a laser rifle. <laughs> they have no concept of a Gauss pistol or, 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 or you know, um, a shotgun. Yeah, even. yeah, because we haven't shown any of that stuff off, really. Right, we and sh so showed off the shield. Uh, Bocephus has a hell of a punch. <laughs> they, they know that, right? But. Uh, yeah, right, and that it. that was enough to impress them in and of itself. That and the fact that you travel with Bocephus, who they're not entirely certain still may or may not be demonic. But, um, yeah, they don't know <laughs> some of the things that you can do. So, off you guys are going to... Uh, yep. They haven't heard of artillery. You know, <laughs> why... <laughs> Why don't we just go get in the fucking Drizneks and buy that motherfucker and land it over in one of these big ass fields and, right, and right go do front, our thing? Right, right in their front yard. Fuck well, yeah, man! Bypass uh, the wall and everything, and be like, you know, welcome to the new age, Grandma. Well, we'll get we'll get to that in just a moment. Before we get started, I'd like to thank one of the friends of the Greenwater Guild all. None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They are just products that we really like. Tonight, we'd like to thank Dogmite Games. Dogmite Games makes beautiful wooden tabletop accessories for your role-playing games, such as custom DM screens, uh, dice vaults, dice trays, dice towers. They have this really cool thing called the Player Vault. You really should look that up, especially if you're a player. I don't, I don't know that I would necessarily use it very much as a DM, but um, as a player, it is freaking cool. Um, and all of their items can be customized. If you order something that's customized, it'll usually take about six to eight weeks uh, from time of order to ship to you. Um, if you are in a hurry or it's a gift idea or something along those lines, they do have in-stock inventory on their website, so uh, definitely check that. And those items usually ship in one to two business days, and they are just as beautiful as the custom-made ones. Um, if you are looking to purchase, we do have a 10% discount code available. Uh, it is good for everything on their site, so uh, put you know all of your treasures into your cart, and when you're ready to check out, use the code FRIEND in all capital letters, and that will get you 10% off your your uh, purchase. <clears throat> if you are a fan of the channel, we do have um, the Greenwater merch store via Zazzle. Um, there are t-shirts and buttons, and there is a fleece blanket that comes in three sizes, and there's a beer stein that actually makes a better coffee mug. Um, I'm thinking about adding a new product. I'm thinking about putting a, um, a Profit um, baseball cap on there with the green water logo. And I was going to go with white because it looks really nice and crisp in the pictures. And then the thought dawned on me that, it, yeah, it looks nice and crisp now, but in a month, white isn't going to look nice and crisp. <laughs> and so I don't know, I might go with the, with the tan color that I went with for one of the t-shirts. Uh, but yeah, uh, all of the, a hundred percent of the proceeds from that store go directly back into the channel, which helps us, you know, cover, uh, subscription costs for, map assets and um, bandwidth and you know they they get they, <laughs> they add up and so uh yeah that store really helps us out so if you want to help us out uh go get yourself a t-shirt and a button and uh we appreciate you so uh so yeah <clears throat> so you you you're thinking you guys want to do a fly -out. i mean all you know about where this settlement is uh, and, and I don't have a full map of this, <clears throat> but the there is the Unath River, and it kind of splits and creates this valley. And Tala Unath, uh, the the hill fort that you've been staying at, is on the west side. Um, the east side is near that that branch of the river is. The fort of La uh, the hill fort of Lasky and their settlement, but you haven't been over there. And your your ship, you have landed the Desinex in the middle, almost perfectly between the two, in a wooded glen. And so, <clears throat> uh, it's kind of we're kind of figuring it is the halfway point. So you don't really know much about this this hill fort. You, you know that it's there, and that's about it. 
I actually don't like the idea of flying the ship there just because we're trying to convince her to give up her son to us. And I think she's going to be far less likely to give up her son if we fly in in a weird spaceship, well, her, land in her, her court. Her grandson. Grandson, right. But uh, I'm just saying, she's going to be, they're going to probably be completely freaked out by us. It'd be great to scare them. But in terms of her allowing her son, I think if we drive up, it'll look odd enough, but we've got the bard from her previous. Uh, colony she's familiar with him and it's not as frightening the idea of having him ride back with us in a cart that somehow mysteriously but if we were to i think if we were to fly in lower the ramp and walk out they would shit themselves and they would be very unlikely I, to I, allow I, the grandson to leave with us i, I want to get in a real high area and try to just hang out with my sniper rifle i don't think i should go in there and and interact with people because i mean yeah they're very well, xenophobic culture we, man they're we, not we certainly cool. we certainly can drop you off before we get there you know if you want to jump out at a certain point and hang and hang tight yeah uh, if you're if you're trying to um i will i mean that that is a good point that Bocephus has brought up um you've already seen um <clears throat> the initial reactions to the people seeing him. Um, you have to figure that um, Lasky <clears throat> is currently under the control of Calwan's mother, Silwyn. And she... It's, it's a very... Um, it can be anticipated that it's going to be a much more intense environment. And so... Um, if you're trying to avoid a violent reaction, perhaps not having Bocephus with you when you walk into the hill fort may be your best solution. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you're probably correct. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm worried about the idea of. I think she's going to be unlikely to let her grandson go with us if we fly in the ship. I think it'll freak him out that much more. Um, okay, my delivery just got here. I'll be right back. Okay. I mean, anyone else have any thoughts? I, I'm thinking if if you guys are going to go right up here to the gate, you know, then uh, it just stands to reason that, you know, we've got comms. We don't have to stay radio silent by any fucking means. Right. And, and, and you don't yeah. have to worry about anybody listening in on you. Because... Right, they, they don't have <laughs> that capability. Right. Uh, yeah, we could have a, you know, coming right back through this backside, you know, just kind of take a loop around, and and we could probably most of the attention is going to come on the front gate when you pull up. We'll just sneak on in the back, and 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 or me, and uh, I will try to find a high spot to hunker down in with my sniper rifle. So are you? Are you guys planning on just watch. driving the gecko up to the front gates? Are you taking the gecko all the way, or are you taking it partway? And... Well, here's the question. Are you just going straight there, or are you going to try and recon the area first? I would, you know... Recon on the area sounds good, but... Wish we could do it from the ship. <laughs> well, your ship does have drones. We could do drone. We could go back to the ship and then drone at night uh, so it won't be seen so easily. And, uh, and you know... Map this thing out. Yeah, use use nighttime... Uh, you know, use use nightlight. Yeah, use night vision. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, and, and fucking take a nice look at the place and, and see what the fuck. Um, that, I think that's what we should do, especially while Sarda is uh, not talking, you know, I mean, <laughs> he's agreeing to it. Yes. Uh, it's, so it's time who, for his colon who, exam. Who has electronic <laughs> time for his colon exam? <laughs> no, no, no. I've got three more years for my colon exam. <laughs> <laughs> who, who has uh, electronics remote ops? Not me. Now, I mean, I've got electronics, comms, so... So you uh, at least have it at zero. 
Right. Uh, so it'd be, it would be I remote ops plus your dex check to fly this thing. Mm. All that right, so help me at all. I'm zero zero. <laughs> Let's see what Stimpy's got. I've got computer zero. Stimpy's that, yeah. Stimpy's got electronic sensors two and and computers, but he, he'll have. They'll both have that. I'm just looking for somebody with a Dex. Ain't me. That's Sarda. It might be Sarda. We're gonna have to make Sarda do it when he's not here. That's, you know, he'll be back in but a moment. Oh yeah, yeah. But so I mean, that's while he's coming back. I mean, unless uh, Gabriel's got some input. Uh, I've got electronics of zero and a Dex of fourteen. Well, oh. there you go, dude. Fucking fly the remote. Yeah, with well, a 14, that gives that you a plus out. two. That's yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Right. Yeah. Right. Hell yeah, roll the dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that terrible of a check, though. But, um, so, <clears throat> with your night vision, this is pretty much what you... Are picking up of course now <clears throat> on the south and eastern side of this the forest that the Desinex is um, stashed in way off the map to the south um, kind of falls in you know this area here um, it comes right up you know to the base of this hill fort and the first thing that um, well, who wants who wa while well, he's piloting this thing, who wants to make an electronic sensors uh plus intellect check? Not me. Stimpy. Yeah, Stimpy can do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, cuz Stimpy's got sensors too and uh his intellect will give him a plus 1 there or or he gets a plus 2 if he uses EDU. But, yeah, he uh, can use EDU. That's fine. All right. Well, then he's going to do pretty good. I'd say he was probably educated in sensors at some point. He did some he did some reading. So twelve. So with his twelve, he can he can look through these sensors and he determines a couple of things. The first that thing that he determines is that this area coming up to the hill fort from the south, uh, this forest turns into a marshy, mucky wetlands. Uh, of course, being uh, four-wheeled, um, even four-wheel drive, it might be a little difficult getting the gecko through there. But I don't know. Randolph is a pretty good driver, so maybe. This, along the edge here, these are uh, essentially, uh, th they call them Marseille houses, but um, these are, yeah. you know, basically, I guess you could say farmers and things of that nature they don't live directly inside the hill fort and then around this hill fort it this this ground that the hill fort's built on almost looks um man-made like they spent some time slinging mud to build this this hill up and <clears throat> they have earthworks that are built all the way around it kind of in a um almost a random haphazard way um, it, it it can be easily discernible that <clears throat> their idea of defense um, isn't so much stopping a force coming in, but slowing them down and delaying them to the point where um, they're easier to pick off to the point where the opposing force may just decide it's just not worth it. Then, of course, at the top of these earthworks, they have their palisade, um, which it only partially goes around because on the on the northern side is pretty much a cliff. They don't they don't need to worry about that so much. It, that coming up that from the southern side, or I'm sorry, coming up from the northern side is going to be much more difficult because you're going to have to climb um, all, in some places an almost vertical surface in order to get up. 
And then there is, of course, the hill fort inside. And, of course, with the drone, you can see that this is the largest uh, structure. And you know from your time uh, in in, uh, in uh, Tala Unef that that is most likely the chieftain's uh, hut. That's their, their roundhouse, as they kind of refer to them. And then um, the rest of the people live inside. Now, the other thing, and, and this is going to be um, important. <clears throat> so you don't see, there's not a whole lot of, um, unlike Talu Unath, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of armed presence here. Um, I mean, there 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 is some, but they're not uh, nearly um, as... Uh, robust as Tala Uneth was. So um, you're basically seeing that there is um, the bulk of the people here are are peasantry. Um, they can, of course, produce spears and things of that manner. Um, around the chieftain's uh, roundhouse, you do see that there are a couple of, and, and I say a couple, there, there's a fistful of um more what would look like um probably professional warriors um they are not heavily armored and then of course you do see a handful of what you have learned from being in Tala Uneth as noble warriors these are um professional warriors more along the lines of um, knights or personal bodyguards of the chieftain. These guys are armed uh, with a chainmail hauberk, and uh, um, these are the the best armored and armed guys. Now, <clears throat> with the five, um, it wasn't quite high enough, and so the drone is spotted, and um, the the professional warrior or no, it was probably tribal militia that saw it. The tribal militiamen um, kind of shits his his later hosen and um, goes screaming uh, back towards the chieftain's roundhouse. So I guess then the question is <laughs> the drone's hovering over looking at all this stuff through night vision um, what do you guys want to do? I mean... We'll bring the damn drone back, right? Okay, so... Jack, go ahead and make another uh, remote ops plus dex check. I mean... That unless makes you, sense. Yeah, no, that I makes mean, sense. Because they'll end up damaging it. Um, the big thing is, these defenses imply to me ranged combat of some sort, so find out, try to find out the, are the bows and arrows, or they use javelins i mean it seems they, like this is kind they of have uh spears and you know from um from previous um encounters they do have access to to very rudimentary short bows but their their most common uh ranged weapon is using a throwing axe ugh <laughs> all right yeah, because the way this is defensively set up, you'd think that they'd have archers or at least like uh, javelineers or pelt peltalists or peltatists or whatever the hell they call them. Right. They, they might have traps and shit that we haven't cow spotted traps. to. Yeah. But, and yeah, long, long, spears, long spears can defend these narrow openings pretty well. Yeah. My thought, first off, is I don't want to drive the gecko into the marsh. Yeah, because one bad roll is going to get you stuck. And then then you're going to have the problem of getting it out. Um, I remember it has two laser rifles. Why don't we take out some of this palisade with the laser rifle and just walk on in? That's going to get the kid killed. We might want to park it a ways away. I don't. And that's walk fine. in. But I mean, that's, yeah, what about Dolphin right Man, there where it Dolphin says Man earthworks? Dolphin can advance two laser rifles and just, from the gecko, and kill anything that's, <laughs> that gets us trouble. <laughs> I mean, there where the earthworks is, you know, maybe I could sneak in 
Have we already been back to this? Are we still at the ship using yeah. the drone from the ship? Yeah, yeah they used the drone from the ship. Yeah, I wanted to make sure where we were. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to give the bard a tour of the ship while this is all going on. That's oh. that's pretty much what I'll be doing. Okay. So, yeah, the 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 bard that you brought along with you um, is... Uh, so, at first, he was really hesitant about, about going up that ramp. But... Um, he's he. I mean, he he spent the last couple of days with you guys, so he um <clears throat> he he kind of trusts you. And the reality is, him, I I give him a com dot too, so that he can actually communicate back and forth with the translator, get translation for himself <laughs> too throughout. Most okay, of this. okay. So so yeah. So he's <clears throat> he is um. He, he trusts you a little bit, but he is, um, basically his curiosity got the better of him. And he finally has just agreed to go inside. And so he is marveling at the inside of your sky chariot. And he is talking about how, and, it, and this seems to be his assumption, uh, being a bard, you can kind of tell that he is already moving in the, the direction of creating some kind of saga based around meeting you guys. And, uh, and he keeps referring to you as if you are um, direct avatars or ascendants of the sun god. No, we just come from a different sun. <laughs> um, yeah, so... he, he seems incredulous at that. Now, when you give him the com dot, and he's hearing <laughs> the not only the uh, translation, um, he at at first he kind of freaks out because he can hear people you know in other sections of the ship that he can't see, and yet right. he can talk to them. The other thing that that he after he he kind of gets over his initial shock of that, he realizes that <clears throat> there is a. Um, translation going on, and um, he starts to correct it a little bit. Oh, great, perfect. So he he'll he'll like the the translation will come in, um, and it'll be he'll correct it, uh, being like, well, you know, that's not exactly what that means, and he'll he'll kind of tweak awesome. it just a bit to make for it to make more sense. So I'm going to show the most important part of the ship, the auto bar. Yeah, well, that. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Order him a custom drink to show him how to, how we get food out of the auto the dispense of food. Yeah, he he yeah, is no. uh, beyond me. I mean, this would this would be like, um, I mean, this would be like getting abducted and being given a tour of the Greys ship. I'm gonna try to cover myself with like a hooded cloak. Or something, okay. uh, you know. At least have that with me in case. Well, I mean, you. I yeah, yeah, you, you, you would have that um, already. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> I can make it out of a sheet. I mean, it, it's not really. <laughs> Just put go there as a ghost. Ooh, with a sheet <laughs> over my head, you know. And a great big <laughs> fist sticking out. <laughs> have it here we go nope that's not it one of these one of these i still think i should Actually, try to probably, sneak in you probably could just wear um i have um i have a hunter field garb and that hunter field garb is kind of a camo it kind of yeah. covers you pretty well well where did that go sure. Your volume turned way down, sort of. Oh, yeah, my, my I was eating, so my microphone was pointing up in the air. Sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I fixed it. Uh, yeah. yeah that's why, why anyway, I so, my, yeah, your standard, why, your standard exploration um, uh, suit um, is, is hooded and um, fairly well camouflaged. I'll just throw that on on top and of I, all my... Well, I, I really want to wear my armor, but... <clears throat> I don't know where that went. 
I've got my cloth armor, and that's about all we got in this ship. Well, whatever whatever you brought, right? Yeah, I mean, you you got your own whatever your own stuff is. I don't think that you guys, man, it would probably be on uh, the Desinex, I would think. Uh, but I mean, <clears throat> it really yeah, but we on weren't allowed. You didn't let us have combat armor or battle dress. Well, well it, no, but I mean, no, other but, stuff that you may have. Yeah, there, there's other stuff. Like, for instance... Um, I have varying levels of armor, depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing. This I've is... got cloth armor, vac suit, diplo vest. I've got hunter field garb, and I have an advanced <laughs> polycarp armor. This well. is standard body armor on the ship um, on Deep Night Revelation. You, of course, would have access to this. Um, I mean, it's not great. Uh, then of course, and I thought it was on here, but I don't know what does this say. Is there a it's place just... where the water? Do they have well or anything that we spot? Um, a marsh. Yeah, you I mean, swim in the marsh. Yeah, there, there, yeah there's water all <laughs> That's over. That's not the what I'm asking. I mean, uh, I'm asking if they have a well or something. It, the marsh is way the hell down there. Yeah, I would. It, I would assume it, that the the hill fort itself would have a well, probably somewhere along this area here. Uh, probably has multiple wells, to be honest. Water's not really something that would be hard to come by in this environment. That's that hunter garb. It's got a hood. I'm pretty sure you can pull up. That's that's the one I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that it was in here, but anyways. And it provides a bonus for stealth. Yeah, well, I'll wear that then. And it's got. It's not great armor, but it has plus two to stealth, and it uh, allows you to uh, ignore the. Extre effects of extreme heat or cold of plus or minus 50 degrees Celsius. Um, so, so keep you comfortable. Uh, but it's only four armor points, so it's not real heavy value armor. Well, I mean, I can put it over other shit, though, right? I imagine you could, at least the top, if you just want a hood, yeah, you yeah. probably can do that. Yeah. Here it is. This is planet side working, uh, working dress. Oops, that's not what... There we go. So, I mean, you would automatically have access to this as well. <clears throat> I mean, it's only plus one protection, but, um, I mean, it'll keep thorns and brambles off of you. My cloth uh, armor's better than that. Well, of course, yeah. But this is standard planet side um, working uniform. It's it's not like it's not like it's a character sheet where you can only wear one thing. I right. mean, you can drop a diplo vest. I mean, you can you can really lay yourself up if you fucking feel like it. Yeah, and, true. Yeah, but I didn't get all that stuff before we left. I didn't. I hadn't figured that out <laughs> yet. <laughs> well, and the thing about cloth armor is, I mean, the standard cloth armor. There's no mistaking what it is. But the thing about cloth armor is that it can be um, modified and molded uh, and shaped to, to into almost anything you want. Um, there are entire uh, business suits that are made out of cloth armor. Um, so there would be no reason why your cloth armor couldn't look very similar to this. I'm just going to borrow Sardu's uh, hunting garb. I'm going to try to sneak in. And and get a get a spot to provide Overwatch. Really, kind of what I'm wanting to do. Okay. Um, I mean, if shit gets bad and there's, I need to give medical attention. I'll you, I'll you be might, there. You might want to drop us off and then back up a bit with the vehicle, and uh, you know, at that point, go to Overwatch mode. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, that, so they were talking about driving. They don't want to drive all the way up because the marsh is going to get the gecko stuck. And, and right. that's just going to be a nightmare to get it out. Um, so you could drive as far as you're going to go and then kind of split up if that's what you wanted to do. Otherwise, Bocephus is going to be doing quite a long hike. And theoretically, you would get there yeah. before he did. 
No, I think I think as long as I think as long as both Cephas is near the, let him. Yeah, he can drop us off, and then he can. You know, if he needs to fall back to the gecko, we have access to it pretty quickly. Okay. So, I want, you know, am I able to like get the uh, get the gecko to like right in here somewhere? Maybe. Yeah. You know, and I could drop them off. You know, right where? Where the oh, green down here? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to maybe drop them off somewhere around there. You know, and then backtrack. Yeah. I think the first. I think the first one's better. Second All right. ones get too who get want, too close to the marshland. Who wants to? I'm so, drop, are you dropping two... Bocephus off, or is Bocephus dropping you off? You could drop me off. Why isn't he? Fine. Oh, I thought you'd drop us off, and you'd have access to the vehicle if you needed to get to it. And that way, we can walk into the facility rather than having to worry about driving the vehicle in there and getting it stuck or have it them confiscate it. And then if we need it, you, we could we need you or it, we can radio you to come get us type thing. That's that's what I was thinking. So I don't have drive. That's the problem. Man. That is a problem. Randolph's well, the one with the drive but I mean, scale. <laughs> but I mean, you know, without drive, I mean, it's like you're not good at it. But that thing can go over pretty much anything. So as long as you, as long as you're not going through the swamp itself. Well, how no, about no, that? I'll, I'll get that thing stuck if it's needed. I mean, I, I'll have to make drive checks if. If the shit is man, it's just better off to use as a rallying point where you drop it off. Just drop me off where my thing is and proceed, and I'll start sneaking up. I mean, y'all will have a lot of time talking and waiting for leaders right. to come down, and I can. But, but I, can I don't think we're gonna be able to drive it to here, so we're gonna have to leave it somewhere at some at point. The, at that other second little green mark, and you walk in from there. I think. I think. The one on the left is the one where we ought to leave it because I don't want to take it anywhere close to the marsh. That's fine then. We'll just park it there at the first one right next to Earthworks, and and that'll give me a, a head start towards sneaking in while you make your thing. You can tell me when you're approaching the gate. I mean, I, we can I use think, comms. I think it's really dangerous for you to sneak in because you're they're gonna absolutely freak out if they see you sneaking through here. I roll the, the secret is for not to get there. caught. Okay. I, well, I was going to ask you, you about that. <laughs> I mean, how sneaky are you? Because they're just going to assume a devil's attacking their village. I mean, it's that's it, fine. I mean, your 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 suit is going to give me what plus two? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm rolling with plus four. Then, I mean, right, that's pretty fucking sneaky. It is, yeah. but there's probably multiple people rolling to see if they notice you. <laughs> man, you know, uh, scared man can't win. Well, right, but so, well, your your know, presence your presence ter will terrify them, and so probably so. But uh, sneaking in would make it that much scarier than just walking to the front door, and so it could have unintended worse make things worse than you walking up with us. Oh man! Well, the last time I I was I, I'm going to try to avoid any contact. I I think I can ninja this. I mean, if the predator walked up to your door, you'd be scared to death. But you found him sneaking through your backyard. That's really freaky. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. I, I think I could sneak in. I mean, especially... Uh, it's, it's designed to prevent people from sneaking in. This entire defensive layout is designed to prevent people from being able yeah, to sneak in. Yeah, and when you walk up on the gate, every fucking Tom, Dick, and Harry with fucking a gun and an eyeball or a bow or a muscle to flex is going to head to you. And that's when I'm going to start doing my sneak in. I'm just going to get up to the close as I can get, and then, and then I'm going to start my way in uh, when you guys head... You guys are a big distraction. I mean, that's really going to give me a big bonus on being able to sneak in from a different way when the alien fucking death guard walks up. Right? That is true. So, Glenn or uh, Randolph <clears throat> uh, got a 12 for his drive check and. He makes it to uh, the drop-off point for Bocephus. Um, so, Randolph, you are in your process of driving from the 
um, from the dust next to this point, <clears throat> the ground is getting mushier and mushier as you're going. And you've kind of, uh, you've kind of figured out that some of the, the best tactic to get over some of this, this softer land without getting stuck is actually using uh, a, a kind of cr uh, crawling the gecko over these large tree roots to give yourself a little bit of a more firm ground and something to actually get traction on. Um, and you, you, you do slip a, a couple of times. You've switched the, the vehicle into full four-wheel drive mode and uh, you were able to get him there, but but you are realizing that this was actually a better plan because going too close uh, to these uh, marsh side houses, it, very likely you're going to um, get, it, it, at the very least, it's likely that you're going to get stuck. At the most, uh, some of this yeah. ground is soft enough that you're worried that the entire vehicle may sink. And then it's just gone. I don't want that. That's right. my baby. Right. <laughs> yes. Let's let's look for some rocky terrain or something, tree roots or something that's gonna and park it. Yes, sir. So Randolph, go ahead and make another um go ahead and make another drive plus dex check. Nine. Okay. So you are able to uh get some climb over some tree roots and whatnot. Um, at this at this point here, uh, which was your initial point where you wanted to park it, really is a good spot because this is kind of the last place where you can park it safely and and you would have to go the rest of the way on foot. And even you know cl going through here towards uh, these these uh, mid green areas. Um, around the marsh houses you're almost uh, you're just below your knees walking through marshy water no thank you so yeah you're is able that, to, to park it there. Is, there a, is there a slimy gray monster that lives in trash disposal <laughs> units uh, <laughs> yeah you see an eye pop water? up out of the water and kind of look around so we probably want to bring some kind of gift to her um, we gave the shield, uh, I gave my shield to the other guy, but I mean, I don't know if there's something equivalent. We bring you this bard. <laughs> well, I mean, he, we're, I, we're I obviously gave, not bringing I gave my, I gave my field knife, my uh, machete to them. Yeah, right. And so I, something like that. I mean, we're just, I, I, I don't have anything specific to my character that I can think of that's going to be ideal for a gift, but just looking around the Desinex for something that... So this, um, I mean, you would have access to more knives. This planet side working dress says that it uh, has a belt pa uh, belt with pouches for tools, instruments, a cold light flashlight, um, chemical light sticks, temporary paper actually, filter. I know mask. what I'm going to give them. And I mean, it's this. it's got a knife. So I've got binoculars. I've, I've got binoculars that I'll give them. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't even need the binoculars. No, I've got binocular vision. So, right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you're so, you're yeah, the six million dollar man. So yeah, I will offer them binoculars and uh, explain what those do. Uh, uh, with these types of defenses, binoculars would be ideal. See, there's a toy I had as a kid. I absolutely love that that toy too. It was the six million dollar man action figure? And you could look like th you could look. You could look through the back of his head. The back of his head, and he had the back, had the little telescopic eye thing. Yeah. It was basically or, a GI Joe doll. It was, yeah. It was, you know, the... Yeah. <laughs> And he had the, the fake skin on the one arm and one leg that you could roll up and, and work on a cybernetic arm. That's right. Yeah, we had, my brother Tom had that. And, um, yeah. I never I had, had the Sasquatch or anything to go with him, but. I had a couple of 12, the big <clears throat> the big G.I. Joes, the old style G.I. Joes. And, uh, I got yeah. a fire starting kit. <laughs> nice. As uh, a toy as a child, or on your character sheet? There, there was another doll <laughs> like that called Bobby Boy Scout that was like a, a G.I. Joe-style doll called Bobby Boy Scout. And uh, when I later got into Boy Scout Troop 95, they used to ritualistically burn those every year at summer camp. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Bobby Boy Scout. <laughs> <clears throat> 
So, um, how about we go ahead and get everybody's initiative going? So, let's see uh, what your initiatives are. You want to clear that first? Actually, I just put it in. So, it should oh, be good. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Let's see. Where is my character at? Is he on the side? Deck or what? Yeah, I put him over here on the left side. Yep. No worries. Is it deck and in, or intellect? Correct. E either, yeah. Yeah, whichever you prefer. It's on the combat tab if you've got things filled out properly. Since they're both DM zero, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, I yeah. a, and I roll a 12 anyway. Well, <laughs> shit, okay. <laughs> Randolph is on it. I have a blade, a shotgun, and an auto pistol. Well, that's definitely going to get people's attention. Well, and this, I find this funny too. The tribal, and I, I wonder if this is a typo, but the tribal militia <clears throat> has a higher dex. Oh, I see what the difference is. So the tribal militia has a higher dex. Than the professional warriors, but the professional warriors have a higher strength. Eh, all right. The other weird thing is that the tribal militia is smarter. I, okay. You need that strength to carry that armor. Well, and the professional warriors are only wearing a jack and a helm. <clears throat> tribal militia actually get a chainmail hauberk and a helm, which gives them a. A plus one versus firearms, and a plus four versus melee weapon. Huh. Anyways. Uh, so. I don't know. My, my shotgun of 4D would probably do the job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, um, a plus one, um, even a plus two, um, is not, <laughs> it's not a lot. It's not going to take much. So... Let's see here. So, Randolph, um, you park the the gecko. Um, what is your what are you doing? You park the gecko. You've got your you've got you just said you got your your weapon. You're gearing up. Um, what what's your plan? So you're you are down here at the edge of this forest, and like I said, going through this is more or less almost knee deep water. And these marsh side houses from this distance, you can see that these marsh side houses are actually connected by wooden walkways that are built up on on pylons that they've driven into the marsh bed and then like at various points there are little uh ramps or stairs that lead up to these uh these marsh houses or or their walkways We've got a bard with us. I mean, we can ask him the way you normally walk to this place. Do they normally walk through the swamp to get there? <clears throat> that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of the, it's kind of built this way on purpose. Sure. Well, it's, you know, we want to follow the custom. Actually, I'd rather go up through this opening here 30, 330 degrees from where we are. You could do that if you would like. In fact, I will just, uh... I don't like walking in knee deep swamp. Man, I don't blame you. I will put you right there so we know where you are at. Man, that is a... So, have we seen wagons anywhere? I know that he had a palanquin earlier, but are there even wagons around that we've... To the, all seen. So to this whole fort, you don't see a whole lot of um, you don't see a whole you haven't seen any wagon traffic to and from Lasky. Um, but um, everybody can make a recon plus intellect check. <clears throat> everybody. Yep. Well, I guess maybe not both Cephas. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 on a different timeline. Or storyline, or yeah, I'm you're, you're going to be doing your own thing. 
Yeah. Well, I spent in the other town. Did we see even parked? You know, anything that would indicate that they use wagons to for commerce. I mean, even the road that we're traveling between these two cities, I mean, is, you know, is there, you know, does it look like there's a trade back and forth? So, Sarda doesn't really notice. Randolph, you do notice it. Uh, and Jack um, definitely spots it. So, aside from, uh, instead of um, seeing wagon traffic, what you are seeing quite a bit of are... Um, these combination um, flat boats that that it looks like the way they're they're designed they have a very shallow draft on them and it looks like the way they're designed they have a couple of ropes hanging off the front of them and so they use these to transport whatever goods or people through the swamp and then when they get to wherever they're going if they have cargo they just kind of tie it around each other's it's waist and, and just sled it to wherever they're going. So sledges that become boats. Okay. And you're seeing quite a few of these things, especially around the Marsh side houses. Uh, so Randolph is moving towards the uh, earthworks uh, at the base. Um, Jack, where are you going? I'll go to the front gate with Sarda. Okay. I assume that's where he's going. Okay. I'll stay with Sarda. Wherever okay. he's going. And Sarda, you're just heading for the front gate as well? I'm looking for what looks like a footpath. If there is a footpath, I want to follow that footpath. That's really what I'd like to do. I mean, if I don't see a footpath, I'll ask the bard where to go. But I, I'm trying to follow the customs that they use. And so, you know, if the, if they have sleds that are being dropped off here and they're walking, if they're walking up here, that's the way I want to walk. If they're walking, you know, yeah, that's... The, that's... the bard kind of tells you that um, essentially um, all visitors to Lasky go through the Marshside houses, and that's kind of um, their, their vetting, uh, I guess, so to speak. That's their, their kind of process. Perfect. Um, All right, that, then that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I want to follow custom so that, you know, as a stranger, I don't want to be looking like I'm intruding into their privacy and not following custom. Gotcha. And, and, and I'm going to tell him flat out, I don't know your customs. I don't want to offend anybody. And so if you say think I'm saying or doing something that might be offensive, let me know. <laughs> he 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 chuckles at that and he says uh he, he jokingly says that um uh, everything about your you being here is uh, is has the potential to be offensive. Yeah, he, but there's 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 <laughs> shocking and then there's, you know, screw your mother, you know. Th hmm. You know, I I'm, I'm say I don't want to I don't want to what wade into that territory? I, I right, it's, right. I don't want to. I don't want to. It's it's one thing to be weird outsiders that are scary and frightening. It's another thing to specifically insult them, and I don't want to specifically insult them. That's that's really what I'm looking for. Right, right. So, um, so yeah, you you are. You're moving up with uh, Jack, and let me see. Oh, these guys truly, truly suck. Uh, well, maybe they don't suck that bad. So, um, you, so Jack and uh. And <clears throat> Sarda, you are kind of trudging your way through this uh, swamp with the bard. And uh, you can hear shouts and calls out from these Marshside houses. Um, and you can see torches are being raised. Uh, these uh, people are, are rushing indoors and kind of um, shutting shutters. <clears throat> You know, like like the farmer did, but um, there are a number of people, um, and well, two. There are two of these uh, 
warriors wearing um, a chain mail and a helm, and they are they are both wielding uh, what you have learned they're calling a war spear. It's it's a stick with with a bronze head on it. Um, that are shout and they've got torches and they're kind of holding them up, trying to get a better look at you, and kind of moving down in in towards this direction, um, trying to get as much light as they possibly can down towards where you're at. Because sun is is starting to set um, as you have been moving through this uh, this marshy forest, and so uh, they're they're holding up these torches as you're approaching. So by now, I mean, I, I don't think it's too much of a reach to not require translation to basically just say yeah. hail and well met, hail and well met. That's that's really all I want to do. I'll use the translator for anything beyond that. Right. right. But I want I want to at least yell that out in their own language to try to you know make them think that this is not yeah, a and the, hostile and the, encounter. The bard is holding up his arms and essentially he's yelling out that uh, uh, we are friends, we are en uh, emissaries. Uh, uh, come to parlay with Silwyn. Um, and he, he points to you guys and the translation unit basically tells you that he's telling them that you are very, very important emissaries from Kalwan. That, that Silwyn is going to want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him talk. He's, he definitely sounds like he's better at this than I am. And they're likely to know who he is, too. Well, they'll be up here. They're not going to be bothering. They're not going to be concerning themselves with Palisade works. So they're doing whatever it is they do. So... Uh, Bocephus, go ahead and make a, uh, stealth plus dex check. And you get any bonuses that, uh, that suit would provide for you. Okay. Um, can I, can I kind of say what I'm trying to do? Yeah, Real quick do. before we, gonna... all right, see, I'm, this, this area kind of right in here. Oh, damn it. This area kind of right in here. That's a real steep, rocky-like thing. I'm guessing it is. Right? It is. It is yeah. almost a nearly vertical cliff face on the uh, northwestern side of that. Hell yeah! So I'm gonna try to get you know as close as I can up in here where I have a, extreme vegetation cover and stuff. Okay. And then I want to go ahead and knock my side drug. That'll give me a plus four to my psionics. And I want to use telekinesis flight to try to go right up that cliff face <laughs> over the palisades, and I want to land right in there, nice and quiet, and and stealthily in there. I want to lay down and and go ahead and pull out my gauze sniper rifle and just see how things go. Okay, so the first thing we need you to do is make a because uh, you're going to be this is pretty much open field grass field type areas so right getting... well, i don't want to if, if i don't if, I, I want to take the smarter indirect path i want to use vegetation i i yeah i want to you know kind of move that way okay and then yeah i want to get up use that rock cliff face i want to use cover of the net you know natural thing if if i'm hearing shouts and shit way down over there you know i'm trying to come right up this you know i'm coming right up their anus Right, just, you know, somewhere up there, trying to avoid any kind of, you know, possible line of sight issues as best I can. But I will give you that stealth roll you keep talking about. Yes. Uh, because you like that shit, <laughs> and I get plus two. So yeah, here is my. Uh... Yeah, that's that is pretty good. Uh, yeah. So they are. You are stealth. You make your way from. This tree, this copse of trees over here to the base of the cliff. On your next turn, um, you will be able to, um, of course, um, spend your side point or take your side drug and you can uh, try flight. Yeah, so, yeah, this will either be really cool and work out great, or I won't fly and 
I'll have to come up with something else. Right. The nice thing about the nice thing about the hunter garb is that it doesn't have uh, a range penalty on uh, stealth. Like camouflage only works out to a certain. If, if you're too close, it doesn't work well. You don't get the bonuses uh, if you're too close. That hunter garb does not have limits on it like that. So sure, the, the professional warriors are pretty much uh, they are up here all along this palisade. Um, and they don't see anything, and they if they do hear the shouts coming from the marsh side houses, they apparently don't care. That's that is not their job. That is below their pay grade, and so they are staying where they're at. Uh, Randolph, what would you like to do? <clears throat> I'm going to move to the north, north, northeast, east, northeast. Uh... Along this, so uh, along here. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. Uh, I would say you could probably get to about there. Uh, go ahead and make a go ahead and make a stealth plus dex check. This is not going to be good. <laughs> that scene builds trust, like trying to sneak up on. Well, it, it's not. Off. It's not as bad as it as it could have been. Um, so, yeah, you're you're not. It's not like you're crashing along, but um, of course, this is kind of where this hill starts, and so you're you're walking on uneven tilted ground and you're you're slipping a bit um you're probably not being as stealthy as you would like um so jack you see these these uh <clears throat> these two tribal militiamen <clears throat> and they are uh kind of yammering back and forth um not i don't necessarily think it would be arguing but um they are trying to get more information out of this uh, bard, this tribal bard that you brought with you from Tala Unath, about you know what what about these people makes them so important? Is there is there some kind of answer that you want to give about that, or, or what do you want to do? I'm just sort of Sardis bodyguard, but okay, I'll let him do most of the talking. Okay, um, are you are you keeping? weapons down are you yeah i'm weapons down i don't yeah i'm not brandishing anything okay gotcha so the tribal militia i don't know these guys oh, they're not that bad actually they're okay So the tribal militia uh, kind of listens to the bard, and um, they um, they have a couple more more than a few questions. Like uh, aside from you know what makes you guys so damned important, but they're they're looking Sarda and Jack up and down, and they they have mentioned to um, to the bard several times. You know why are why are they dressed so differently? What are they? What is what is all this stuff that they're, they're carrying? Um, what what tribe are they from? Um, they don't look like they're from around here. And and the bard uh, so basically the bard is answering questions with all will be revealed, but uh, it is for Silwyn's ears, not yours. And so the tribal militia have agreed to escort uh, uh, Jack and Sarda up through the main gate. I'm, I'm going to hand them my rapier as a ge gesture of peace. Uh, that I, I mean you no harm, and I hand them my rapier. The, the tribal militia kind of looks this thing over and... Uh, uh, the two of them laugh at one another, or to one another, kind of um, 
over and, and they're they are uh, um, basically referring to it as a woman's weapon because the blade is so thin and light. I'll say I am not very strong. And, and they allow the trans. They both start to laugh again, and and they both they're like, uh, yeah, we can but, tell. But it is pointy, so be careful with it. Uh, it's because I imagine if they're Bronze Age, their points are pretty dull. Yeah, compared yeah. To modern right here. And well, so yeah, I'm, they're I'm... they're they're probably using you know kind of like a bronze uh, short sword, you know, um, gladius kind of uh, sure. weapon. Uh, and they they do well, have those. They're keeping them. They they have them sheathed. They're they're just carrying their war spears. And of course they they have um, a round uh, kind of a, a leather covered wicker shield. Right. Okay. Yep. And um, right. so yeah, they these these two tribal warriors are are going to. Um, yeah, I'm leaving my pistols on my hip, but I say here. I want you to hold this rapier. Yeah, here you have the rapier. <laughs> yes, right. The uh, as a show of peace. Here, the hold noble. the thing. I don't know how to use. Yes, here you can take the worst of it. Take the item I don't know how to use, but it was given by the navy, so I have to keep it. Well, that's pretty good. So the. The noble warriors up here that are in the main part of the village have started to kind of take notice of, um, you know, there seems to be an awful lot of commotion going on to the south. There's a lot of yells, and they're like, you know, what what's going on? So they sent they start to send a couple of uh, of their their group, you know, moving south, uh, uh, you know, along these this main road towards the gate. Uh, they're not in a hurry. They're just because they have no idea what's going on. They just heard these shouts and and uh, and some kind of commotion going on. Uh, Bocephus, you may spend your side point and attempt uh, telekinesis. Let me get to my science uh, so I can see no. see this. I am gonna. Use my psionic drug, and so uh, 12 plus 4 puts me at 16. That gives me plus 3 yes. right now. Yes, it my... does. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to try to fly, <clears throat> and I rock it yeah. uh, with a 16, and so that gives me six turns of flight because that's the effect. Yes. Now. All right. Yeah, so, so I am now the, the flying demon of ultimate death. Yeah, <laughs> and you can fly 15 meters per round. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to try to, you know, hug the terrain as much as I possibly can and just kind of, you know, go real quick over the palisade and lay down on top of that building there you could definitely right. do that well, yeah and then from there i'm just gonna hang out with my sniper rifle and wait for someone to fuck around and find out so make a uh so you're flying but make a stealth plus dex check and because of the setting sun you can add a uh plus two to that well, okay. 53. <laughs> so, yeah, no, the the professional wares that are lined along this um this uh palisade, they don't uh they don't notice you. Um and Yeah. Well, good. I didn't put her up here. Oh, that's that's the chieftain queen right there, isn't it? Yeah, that is Queen Bitch. Let's see here. Oh right. Do I see her right now? No. She's inside okay. that, that house. Wonderful. So I don't know if she's there. Yeah. If I did, she would die. Sarda would be angry. But ah sniper rifle, the problem. 
Ah. That's right. Okay. I so, won't shoot her when she comes out the door, Sonder. So the professional warriors, uh, like I said, you um, have skated up to the roof of this, uh, this, this hut, and this this particular uh, hut that you're on is uh, kind of a multi-sectional, and so um, there is two two uh, smaller huts that kind of bulge off of it. It's like a three room. Uh, like the, the the roof that you're on top of is the common room, and then there are two side rooms that come off of it. And uh, you can see that there are a number of uh, professional warriors, uh, and to tell you exactly how many, you in this vicinity around here, you know, you can see that there are about nine of these guys walking around. Um, they are all armed, similarly, um, but they... Uh, they have, of course, the the bronze sword in a sheath. They are carrying a round wicker uh, shield. They have the war spear. They also on on the on their back, uh, in the small of their back and their belt, they are all carrying a hurling axe. And these guys are just basically wearing like a leather jack and a pot helm. Um, it would it would be well, you probably wouldn't know this, so never mind. Uh, Jack might pick it up, though. Um, Randolph, um, what are you doing? I'm just crouching down and waiting for the other two to go by on the path. Okay, go ahead and make another stealth plus dex check. And I'm going to give you a plus one because you've decided to crouch down. <clears throat> That's better. <clears throat> so the the militia, uh, the tribal militia, uh, you, they don't notice you, and uh, so I'm assuming Jack, you're just following this tribal militia that that are leading you to the gate. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Jack, um, make a recon plus intellect check. Seven. So looking around, you can see some of these professional warriors up here along the palisade. And you can see that unlike even the tribal militia that are leading you, um, you can see that these guys, um, it is the, the first thought that occurs to you is that they may not actually be a part of the Lasky Hillfort tribe. You think that these are more than likely um, hired mercenaries. <clears throat> oh, good targets. And I mean, you saw some. You saw some similar to. You saw some troops that were similar to this um, in the Tala Unef uh, Hill Fort, but <clears throat> these uh, they didn't have quite as many of them. It seems like. Uh, there are far more of these professional uh, type warriors um, than there are like the tribal militia and the noble warriors. Um, but you can tell just by they're, they're not wearing the, the chain mail like the tribal militia or the noble warriors you've seen have worn. These guys are um, dirty. Um, they're wearing a leather a leather jacket, uh, something that would be light for for long travel. Uh, these guys look like they're mercs. Um, the tribal militia, <clears throat> um, they just continue to lead you guys up the uh, path, and there is, of course, this gate here and this gate is essentially uh you know it looks identical to the rest of the wooden palisade and it it just is i, I saying that it's hinged is <laughs> probably eh, they've got bronze age so it probably is hinged uh, but for the most part it's just roped you know rope lashed together and they lead you guys in and kind of up the trail and of course 
you know, except for the fact that Jack and Sarder are wet from the knees down, um, this is a fabric. this is much I'm, firmer I'm not, ground. My my armor's got smart fabric and oh yeah, self, it's self automatically cleaning. dry itself. Well, it's smart fabric. That just means you're going to get your Facebook notifications in your drawers. Oh no no, it's uh, a. <laughs> It is self sealing uh, and computer weave and uh, and smart fabric. So it, oh, nice. it, it nice. yeah. I, I thought maybe your underwear vibrated every time you got a an email message. Now that too. <laughs> it's also got tactical video suites and uh, full motion chameleons. <laughs> yes, that too. Yes, yes. Uh, so sort of what are so as you as you're walking your your smart clothes are. Uh, just uh, drawing themselves off. Um, and, you know, that's a good question. I wonder, let's see. Uh, they probably don't notice, but you never know. Oh, well, I mean, I'm... No, they I probably... They have I've no probably, idea. I've probably removed my helmet. I mean, the way I'm dressed is probably going to be intimidating enough because I am wearing polycarbonate right. armor. Well, I was, so... I was leaning to see if, if uh, the um, the tribal militia that were walking with you noticed that your pants are dry and they they got a two for their recon check they for guards these aren't these guys aren't that aren't that great um so what are you doing um they're not so this is the this is what it looks like here um well i mean i'm, I'm if they're leading us on i'm gonna go with them i'm just sort of looking around checking things out i've got my helmet off I don't want to completely uh, uh, freak them out. Okay. So, yeah, looking around, uh, now that you're inside this hell fort, um, you can, I mean, the first immediate <laughs> thought that jumps to mind is that this is way smaller than Tala Unef. Um, right, but it's far more defensible. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's very, honestly, Tala Unef's uh, layout is similar but they don't have this this swamp in front of them so yeah it is more defensible um but uh so these these uh bands of rock are anywhere from uh, on the north side or anywhere from one to three meters high um the the earthworks are anywhere from one to three meters high as well so they're kind of definitely piled up and then of course there is the wooden palisade um on the Western and uh, Western and southern slopes. There's a shallow ditch, earth rampart. Um, so they they have taken time to definitely. If if you were an invading army, this army this would not be an easy place to get into. But you're seeing that right. the total population you're estimating is probably around 150 people. Um, well, it's not geared well for agriculture, right? I mean. They're probably on, living on off the northern, fishing. yeah, it's mostly fishing. On the northern side, there is some agriculture going on, but it would be definitely more of a fishing settlement. Yeah, um, and it says right here, most are farmers and fishermen. Um, uh, they work the surrounding lands, and uh, aside from that, I mean, other than it just being smaller, it's very similar to Tala Unaf, um, just with fewer people. Now, the people that you are seeing um they like just the civilians not the warriors they they seem to be a mixed bag they and both both you and jack are noticing that they are um maybe perhaps a bit bedraggled um yeah like um i don't know they just don't seem like they're put together quite as well as the people of tala unath and it's not, it's hard to put a finger on it, but um, they, they just seem like they're, they're having a harder go of it. Sure. Like maybe they're a little bit oppressed. Um, that's about the only, like they, they hang their head more. Their clothes aren't quite as put together. Um, you know, they got a lot of raggy knees going on kind of situation. Uh, but aside from that, um, you know, just like you said, like I said, there are about 150 total people in this entire go for it. But the bulk of them are, um, you know, fishermen and farmers. They're not 
Right. They're not warriors. The tribal militia, the professional warriors, and the noble... There seems to be more of these professional warriors than there are of tribal. And, uh, you know, you're starting to see some of these noble warriors walking around, and there's, you know, m maybe nine or ten of them. There's, there's not a whole bunch of these guys. And do they look as bedraggled, or do they look like they're doing okay? Um, that's a good question. So... When you look at the, mirror, mirror, like the noble warriors, they don't quite look as bedraggled um, so much. They are, of course, wearing their chainmail halberks, um, and they seem to be almost um, acting like they have like an air of authority, like like they're sure. better than everybody else. Yeah, aristocrats. Yes, yes, exactly. But, I mean, it's a bad ratio, right? I mean, the medieval serfs, you'd have one knight for every 100 peasants. And so if they've got 150 peasants and 10 of these guys, that they're, they're going to be in trouble financially. Correct. Right. Right. Um, the, right. They don't have giant war mounts either. That's, you know, those, those horses. Well, yeah. Are, yeah. <laughs> right. You know. In terms of upkeep, that was, that was problematic. Right. Right. So the... Uh, well... And and the other thing about that too is that you know um, in medieval Europe the knights and nobility yeah they were pompous assholes but at the same time they also realized that they had a responsibility to the serfs right they, yep. it was their job to protect them and yep. you know if 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 the nobility or the knights um, shirked that duty there there were cases where the serfs would send somebody to a higher authority the king perhaps and say hey right. this knight's not doing his job we've been raided you know three times in the last month you need you need to talk to this guy um and and that was that that was actually not unheard of right these guys the look that on their face and the way just the way they're carrying themselves does not present to you that um, that knowledge of their responsibility. Gotcha. It's more of a we're in charge and you people are dirt. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Okay. To kill them. We should, we should take, we should just remove the hierarchy here and let the people rule themselves. I, I don't think we should get involved in that. They can set up a democracy. Or elect a new king. I don't give a shit. So what you were told about this place from Calwan was that Lasky, so his his mother, Silwyn, isn't really the chief of Lasky. Um, the chief of Lasky was a big supporter of hers. And so when she was essentially... Um, tossed and her son took over um, right the chief of lasky <laughs> kind of gave her um refuge right and so uh essentially <laughs> what has happened is that you know she has more or less taken over for all intents and purposes but it, it's not even so much that she's taken over it's that this guy kowtows to her and gives her whatever she wants he still thinks of her as you know, Bigham chief, and she's not. Um, but the the noble warriors, uh, they start to come forward, and they're asking these tribal warriors, you know, um, exactly what the hell are you doing, and who are these people? And they're kind of looking you up and down. And the, they are not nearly as... Um, They're not nearly as willing to communicate the way the tribal militia were. They're, That's fine. They're being much more authoritative. And the bard is like, no, no, you don't understand. They're emissaries uh, from Kalwan. And as soon as he says that you guys are emissaries from Kalwan, the noble warriors uh, kind of change their stance. Like, they're, they're ready for a fight. So I, I, I will correct him slightly and say we are not we are outsiders. We are of the Deep Knight clan. Okay. We have 
agreed to be an intermediary between Kawa and your uh, town. Your yeah, Solon or so and and Solon. So, um, <clears throat> so we are not from Kawa. We are from our own clan, but we have agreed to be intermediaries. Okay. And I hope I'm hoping that word translates well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead and try. Uh, go ahead and make a. Do uh, you have uh, diplomacy? I do. I make a diplomacy plus um, eh, your choice, either charm or soch. Um, but I'll do both. They're both zero. I'll add them together. I'll totally <laughs> cheat. Divide them. Divide. Swear it. <laughs> Oh uh, man, I gotta yes. divide by zero error. So yeah, so uh diplomacy. <laughs> Go up here. You forgot to put your air you forgot to put your air recovery <laughs> code in. All right, I completely insulted his mother. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yes <laughs> yes, sort of like so we're from the Deep Night Clan and your mom <laughs> and, um and so, yeah, this guy is... The, the bard's, like, giving me that signal, like, that. Oh, that's yeah. the wrong thing to say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the bard's, like, <laughs> eh, 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 kind of stepping back behind Jack. Um, these these two noble warriors um, are incensed um, by this. And one of them calls out uh, to... Uh, basically calls out for some more... Uh, um, reinforcements. Bocephus. Um, make a recon plus intellect check. <clears throat> All right. So you you can hear some more uh, shouting. Um, and whatnot, but this time it's coming from over towards the the big yeah. roundhouse. Um, or I'm sorry, uh, coming over towards the center of the hill fort, rather. And uh, it does. It's it they. It sounds. Um, I mean, you're you're too far away necessarily to be able to pick up what they're really saying, but it definitely sounds angry and it sounds alarming. <clears throat> I expect that kind of stuff to go on. Uh, I will know when my people need me to really start laying down some hate when I hear gunfire and shit. So I'm just going to try to get me a better... When you hear one, this, when you hear one of them be like, "Hey, this guy's got a nice hat," <laughs> uh, ping. Is, is is this a taller building right here? It is a little bit taller. Right. What about that? Maybe I can hit that. Maybe, maybe I have enough to loop around. That'd be cool. I would, that? I would say yeah. uh, with 15 meters worth of movement, yeah, that's not going to be exact um, because that's, oh, not, yeah. that's not matched to this right, map. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah. But I would say that with 15 meters worth of movement, you could definitely get here. Yeah, I want to go ahead and, and get right there and take a peek see see if I can see what's going on. Okay. That certainly gives you a better shot. I mean, everyone's kind of looking, you know, and I'm up high, and, you know, yeah, and he rolled low as shit. Yeah, so. yeah, you weren't seen by the professional warriors. Um, <clears throat> so, And hopefully this is a more secluded place right now. Wow. Uh, so. Well, not too many people are going to be looking at the roof anyway. Look, looking at upon the roof anyway. <clears throat> yeah, the yeah, Jack and Sarda are drawing pretty much all of the attention to them. Um, so, what what kind of rifle are you using, Bosimus? A, ga a gauze sniper rifle. Oh, so you do have a scope. <laughs> yeah, you can look oh, yeah. through your scope and you can see that uh, these two noble warriors have kind of stopped these two tribal warriors and Jack and Sarda and the Bard. And 
are kind of confronting them and uh, you can see that coming from up in this direction that there are two more and you can kind of see them moving from between these buildings at least two more uh, of these noble warriors heading that direction and they are they're double timing it <clears throat> they're does somebody around. look to be in charge uh not that you can i mean they're they're all pretty much dressed the same they're all wearing you know well um, you know but is somebody acting like they're telling other people what the fuck to do or or anything like that not, uh, not that is, you can discern so that's far more animated than the other make a recon plus intellect check Go for the tall one, if, if the worst case scenario. Yes. <laughs> oh, you got to add big, one to this, big. but four, so that's five. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, you, I'm I mean, just going to fucking, you... the closest one to fucking Sarda, I'm going to go ahead and take aim and, uh, and turn the safety off of my rifle, and I'm just going to fucking watch. And as soon as things get violent, I'm going to get violent. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> then I'll, I'll on my comms. I'll click them a couple times to let you know. I'm not really going to talk, but I'll click two times. Click, click, and and then people can take that what they want. And I'm talking over comms, so you would hear what I was saying. You yeah. know. Right. Right. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, they could. I mean, with a comm dot, you could probably they could probably hear what's being said or partially at least um muted uh the professional warriors aren't really paying much attention randolph what are you doing i'm moving to there okay if i can move further i'll move to here yeah i would let you do that uh that way I can come up behind him if I need to. Yeah, the the <laughs> the, the shotgun pros. Will certainly, the shotgun will reach all the way across his. Oh, they got minus three. They suck. Yeah, they none of these guys have any recon. So, uh, yeah, you were able to make it to that point, and and these guards uh, at one point, one of the guards in one of these uh, tower huts. Um, kind of looks over in your direction you're kind of staying low and clearly evidently doesn't see you thank you so jack these guys are um kind of being deck i mean after hearing what i just heard i don't particularly care if they hear see me or not i'll just <laughs> i'm coming up to be <laughs> To, to be overwatched from behind. Right, right. And if, I, and if I need to cut somebody down with this shotgun to get there, it's just the way it goes. Right. <laughs> so I actually missed it. What? So what did they say? So these these noble guards, uh, these two noble warriors, uh, stopped the procession. They um, there was an interchange, and uh, they didn't really I, like what they were hearing from the bard about emissaries. Sarda corrected the, uh, corrected the bard and said that we we're a part of our own clan, the the Dark Knight or the Deep Knight clan, and we are uh, we are not emissaries. We are acting as intermediaries, and uh, something about the guy's mother. And so the noble warriors got... I rolled a three on my diplomacy. <laughs> yes, the noble warriors got pissed off and uh, uh, have basically called in an additional two reinforcements. So there, there's two noble warriors immediately. There's another two on their way. And they have taken a more of a um, combat stance with their war spears. <clears throat> Is it... Time to I put wanna... helmets on. <laughs> put on the Don't make me helmet. put on this helmet. <laughs> put on this fucking helmet. Draw my weapon. <laughs> make sure it's an AM4. Set it on full auto. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Sarda? Is it time to be non-diplomatic? 
Not not yet. I mean, they haven't right. they haven't they haven't gotten aggressive with us, and I'm pretty confident in our armor. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. I'll just chill then. It's it's the bard that I worry about. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> rest. So yeah, Maybe I mean, it... rest a hand on my stunner, but that's it. Yeah, you, I, I can imagine Sarda looking over at Jack, and Jack's kind of like, hmm? Is it time? Is it time? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, that 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 look, if you've ever if you've ever been in a bar fight and there was a Marine on your side, there's a look that they get. Like like that tensed up pit bull that's straining on the leash look. Like, can I can I do it yet? Can I <laughs> <laughs> the vein in their neck is sticking out. One eye's twitching. Uh the Tribal militia, um, uh, he is, so one of these noble warrior, or noble warriors is chewing this, this tribal militiamen up one side and down the other for bringing you guys this far into the fort. And is basically telling him that you are just, you guys are just, you militia people are worthless. Like, it, we should have left you as farmers because you're not even smart enough to stop people before they actually come into and invade the actual fort. That's your job, and you can't we're, even do that properly. We're we're not invading. We're, <laughs> we're we're here. We're just here to talk. We we mean we come in peace. I've even handed my weapon to him. Yeah, the, the yeah I, the and, tri the and the tribal militiamen is like yeah. See, he gave us this weapon, and and the the the. Uh, one of the other uh, noble warriors, so the other two have now approached, there's four of them standing there, and they, like, two of them start laughing as soon as they take a look at this rapier. <clears throat> They're like, that's not a sword. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, agree, I agree it's not as impressive as the weapons you have. However, you'll notice it's crafted very well. And, uh, and they they laugh, and one of them says, "Hey, Toki, my mom uses something like that to sew my britches." Uh, she pro probably could. I mean, it would go through very <laughs> stiff material, <laughs> including your ass. <laughs> uh, so the tribal anyway. the tribal militia, the two tribal militiamen that are that have been leading you are kind of um, off their off footing because I mean. They thought they were doing what they were supposed to do. I mean, you guys are, are peaceful emissaries, and you have information that only Silwin should hear, yeah. and they're I mean, trying to explain that to these guys, and these guys uh, are just I being I turned dead. the bard, and I'm like, sure, you know, and I mentioned the bard's name. I can't remember what it is now, but... I don't um, remember either. <laughs> yeah, Bob, I, I, the Bob the Bard. Sure, surely you know of him. I mean, he's well-known. Uh, he's an amazing uh, uh, bard, and, uh, I mean, you know, we, we, we simply... Come to discuss a uh, matter between before uh, your leaders. So they. That's all. Well, yeah, one of them is, says to the other noble, word, "Well, he, yeah, Bob's Bob's pretty well known in the Uneth Valley. I mean, he's I, I wouldn't say he's a great bard, but he's kind of middling. Well, you know, everybody knows who he is. He's a nice guy." And and uh, the, the 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 one of the the wars is like oh my god it doesn't matter how great of a bard he is the these two morons have brought in um, an outside force into that we don't know we've never heard of this deep night clan we don't know who these people are they're from outside the valley clearly right. and they've been allowed to come into our hill fort so let's start fresh. Uh, I am Sarda of the Deep Knight Clan. I would like to talk to your leaders. I mean no harm. Take me to your leader. Don't make me abduct you. We've well, our doctor has anal probes. We'll travel. And a sniper rifle <laughs> is on the roof, fifty feet away, right here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Sarda, go ahead and make another diplomacy check, yeah. and this time you can make it. Um, you because you have you you've kind of said let's start over. You get an extra plus two to that. All right, I get A plus two to that. A plus two. Uh, let's see if I can screw this one up too. Uh, ba -ba -ba, diplomat. His life is in your hands because if he doesn't react well, I'm going to shoot him. Oh yeah, there you go. Got an eleven. So he, um, rather than, I mean. 
he d basically decides he, we're not moving forward from this spot. He That's sends, fine. He sends one of the other noble warriors. He says, "Go, um, go tell Silwyn, and let's find out what she wants us to do, and tell the chief, and find out what he wants us to do, and then come back and tell me, and then we will do that." That's good. It's a family matter for Silwyn, is what we're here to discuss. <laughs> right. I say that out loud. Um, so the noble warrior uh, takes off running. Bocephus, through your scope, you can see one of the guys that had, uh, one of the two that had joined the other two. He takes off running towards the uh, big roundhouse. Okay. Um, the the other two are, are still kind of, um, or the other three are still uh, holding up the show he, right here uh, with Sarda right. and um, and Jack. Cool. What do you want to do? Um, man, I, I guess I want to go ahead and and try to get right over here. And okay. uh, yeah, that seems like a good place. Go ahead and lay down right there and watch. Oof. You can take the scope off your rifle now. I assume they have iron sights. Oh, I mean, it, it's not rigged that way. I, I... Yeah, the only thing scopes do, honestly, the only thing scopes do for you in this game is negate the, uh, the what, 100-meter yeah, penalty. Penalty. penalty, or the penalty yeah. for over 100 meters. I mean, even if you have a gun that's got, say, a 250-meter range, it doesn't matter because y the human eye is not going to be able to aim quite that far. Right. And so yeah. the scope removes that, that penalty. Yeah. So none of these a-holes sees... Both I, used to shoot a, I used to shoot at 300 yards. <laughs> Did you have a scope? No. Yeah. No, iron sights with an M1 Garen and a metal target. Oh, well, yeah, ding, M1, ding, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so I'm gonna lay down and and of course I, I'm, I was I'm gonna prone, but I'm gonna lay down and I'm just gonna kind of the door I see the guy go in. I'm just gonna kind of wait right there, and if if that chick comes out, I'm shooting her. <laughs> okay. These people are too aggressive. Got me, got me spooky. So the professional warriors have kind of started to take note, and they are um, pretty much. I mean, they're staying as close to the palisade as they can, but you're seeing probably about twelve of these guys um, moving along the palisade and kind of getting into a position where they can see in between huts and kind of hear what's going on, and. Uh, they're they're kind of prepping to to uh, more or less, and I'll just leave them here. Um, more or less, see, you know, is the shit going to hit the fan? Or are we going to earn our paycheck today? Or, you know, what's going on? And so they're they're kind of their ears are perking up, and they're 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 leaning in and and straining to hear what's being said and what's going on. Uh, can can I have a Given sort of my expandable shield when we traded the hunter garb. Sure. Because he gave his up. I yeah, cal has got it now. Uh, Sarda, you are muted. That, okay, yeah, that, that sounds great. You, yeah, so you have the, an expandable shield, but it is this isn't a fucking gift for some fucking right. wish <laughs> yeah, No, 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 I know. I, I'm going to give uh, my binoculars. No, uh, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I figure we can replicate an expanding shield on the ships, what I figured. More than likely, yeah. Um, yeah, we just have to get back to the ship. I mean, yeah, yeah, it just didn't seem, it didn't seem too tech, high tech. Yeah, no. Okay. So, yep. Randolph, you can... So, from your position, Randolph, on the other side of this palisade wall, you can hear s some movement and some uh, low... Uh, low talk about hey, what's going on, and who are those guys, and you know why are the why are the nobles all pissed off, and uh, are we, is there going to be some action tonight? 
I'm not moving because I can see, I can see. Well, um, you wouldn't be able to see the rest of the party because there is a wall right here. You can hear us talking of the comm dot. So true. But you can you can hear what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I thought there was an opening there. There's an opening here where the gate is, and then there's these two guard towers. Would would if low crawl get? To, if they're having to leave because things get real hairy, uh, you're in a great place to cover that, and you're in a great place to attack if you need to get up in there quick. I mean, that's why I'm here. Yeah. I figure two is enough to scare, is enough to bother these two. If all four of us walked in there, they may not like that. Well, anyway. I'm, not walk- I'm not walking for another couple rounds. You can bet that. So you're going to hold position? Yeah, and I ready a frag grenade. <laughs> okay. Which I could throw over the palisade. Yeah, you probably could, yes. Yeah, uh, you could throw it over the palisade and right onto the other side. Jesus, these guys know diplomacy. (laughs) Well, you know, things happen. It's aggressive negotiation. No. So these three noble warriors uh, have you guys stopped, and uh, they are... At this point, uh, because they're they're just kind of waiting around, the three of them are just being dicks and uh, basically berating the two um, tribal militia that led you here. Um, you know, bringing up probably some of their lineage. Um, evidently, one of their moms is really easy. You know, that kind of talk. And uh, <laughs> so, Jack... Um, <laughs> What are you doing? Still waiting? Uh, I want to I wanna fail a diplomacy check. So. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, leave those guys alone. At least they're smart enough to recognize a superior. Oh. <laughs> so, so Jack says this and, and the three noble warriors just kind of, shut up and they're all they're all three of them are looking at jack and the two tribal militiamen kind of turn and look at jack and the two tribal militiamen kind of are, are rather than uh looking like they are you know supposed to be guarding you they're kind of looking at you like oh shit <laughs> like what what's about to happen and the the noblemen are not happy too bad so sad dear dad <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah, the the two militiamen are are kind of almost slack jawed. Like I can't believe this is happening. Sort of. What are you doing? <laughs> I'll, I'll say uh, I'm I'm sorry for my friend. He gets embarrassed when um, grown men are insulted in front of him. <laughs> Holy shit. Make a make a make a diplomacy check. This anti diplomacy check. Well, you know, I'm trying to be somewhat I'm I'm trying to reframe what, what they were doing in a way that yeah, they didn't like that. No. No, they do not like that. So the 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 one nobleman who you have now pretty much detected that this guy is probably the one in charge. He he thinks his shit doesn't stink. And he goes up to Jack and uh pokes Jack in the chest with his iron or with the the bronze step, tip of his war spear and and says, "So, tell me, uh Deep Knight clan, uh, what is your lineage? How is it that you can tell me anything about how my leadership is or who is in charge here? About that time, you see Silwyn step out of the roundhouse. Standing next to her 
and she is holding his hand, is the boy, uh, Ione. And how, how old is this kid? Is he like a he teenager? Is... Is he, 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 wasn't, he wasn't real young. Oh, no, he what? is real young. He is just over three years old. Oh, okay, so he's fairly young. Yeah. He's just a wee That's... lad. That'll definitely make things odd. But that the, I told but the, his father that I was going to abide by whatever the son decided. I didn't realize well, he was three he, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know, Dad. He said he wanted a beer, and so, um, well, I mean, at three years old, it definitely makes for uh, a better uh, thing for Bocephus with his sniper rifle. Yeah, I'm dropping her. I, I, I'm, I'm hitting her <laughs> with 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 a heap round. And and let's just see how this goes. I really hope you're not. Well, so you, you miss. <laughs> you don't hit the kid. <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so a six. Did you aim? Yeah. That's yeah. Seven. That'd be a seven. I want to use a luck point to go ahead and hit. Okay. You can do Jesus. that. You can burn a luck point. I sure will. That's that that's not really burning one. <laughs> that well right, that that's a temporary usage of a of a luck point. Oh well I mean even if it was I'd do that. But it's because of the heap round I add a damage die. Yep. And this will be armor twelve total because I get oh, some for the heap she's round. In, she's in what? Fishnet close? Uh she takes eighteen and it'll be AP twelve. Okay. So God God damn. <laughs> now so... we fight our way out. You guys hear uh, the yeah you you hear uh, a Gauss round go off and it's not it's not super loud um, but you you can see uh, the blue flash of a Gauss rifle go off from this roof and uh, you can see or well maybe you can't see it because this building is in your way. Um, the entire fort starts to lose its shit uh, because Silwyn is, is now unconscious. Oh, only unconscious? Yes. Is an 18? Yeah. Oh, she's, she's probably got a, a severe medical condition now. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yeah, um, well, it, I mean, it wasn't a critical, but it did hit, and it took all of her endurance and all of her strength and dropped her to the ground. Um, her her bronze um, I mean, halberd... I not going to kill me, and I'm not that exceptional. Yeah, her chainmail hauberk uh, has a rather ghastly hole in it, um, but she is she is down. Um, I will yell out, I am the demon from the future. You God bow down and worship. The professional warriors all start to uh, move from the uh, palisade into the center of the camp. Um, two of them uh, are coming from the gatehouse. Uh towards Sarda and Jack. Um, Randolph, what would you like to do? As one of these passes this area here, yep. I aim and fire my shotgun. Go for it. I hope that the professional soldiers, not militia, at least. Yes, these are professional soldiers. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I miss. Oh, shit. So, this is much louder. And, uh, I mean, yeah, you miss, and part of the guard tower shout. I aim, so I get a point. Right, yeah, you you got a five. And and it's it's, uh, close, so I got a six. Okay, 
True. Uh, but I'm still a mess. But I didn't hit. <laughs> but the, the, uh, the section of this guard tower is blown apart in a shower of splinters. Um, and, of course, there's this big kaboom from the shotgun. And uh, Sarda and Jack, you see, like, all of the these uh, soldiers around you um, jump. Like, they're jumping out of their skin and kind of start to duck. Um, we are going to pick up next week uh, with Jack um, getting the opportunity to feed this guy his war spear um, at 7 o'clock on Friday night. Thank you. You're I right. thought Thank it you. was going off anyway when he started poking the spear at the guy and I saw the lady in charge. That's the best way to get them to shut the fuck up is to kill their leader. We didn't want them to shut the fuck up. We wanted to have a diplomatic conversation between people so that we could well, leave your... Well, there is a plus side on this. If Silwyn is out of the picture, then the kid's life is no longer in danger because she was the only one that wanted to kill the kid. We had failed, like... Kill the kid? Why would she want to kill the kid? Why was that even an issue? If I mean, she I, would... Had, that was her plan, is, is, and which is oh, why... We had no idea that that was the plan. The which is there. why he wanted you to get his kid back, because if she was not replaced, or if she was not reinstated as chief of the Tala Unath, she was going to go through with killing... Her that husband. was never explained to us. I thought it was a custody battle. <laughs> no, no, no. No, he said that. Uh, no, I, he I didn't. He, no, he didn't. There was no mention at all of that. I thought this was grandmother took son, grandson. Uh, when when I saw the guy poking with the with the spear in the chest, I decided I was going to start shooting. I, I that that's when I figured when we'd failed like our eighth fucking diplomatic check, I was kind of like, well, it's it's time. Uh, we've we've tried being nice, and that's that was the way I kind of thought it was going. I wasn't going to shoot a sniper out. Uh, that guard, things was... that guard's causing us problems. I'm assassinating the president. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, she is no longer going to complain. That's you know? true. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, you can still render medical aid. I mean, right? Yeah, I could, uh, but. Not well, likely. Uh, I tell Speaking you, when two or three... is probably not going to be allowed to give render aid. <laughs> well, they're fully aware that uh, they're in deep shit at this point. But we will pick this up next week at seven o'clock. Uh, Take care. Well, All right. Have, have a good, good night, night, guys. <laughs>